Hi everybody, welcome back. Um, for second and third grade this week, we are going to be creating an illustrated character for a book. I had one second grade class that got to start this just very, very briefly, um, right before we closed schools. So I wanted to continue this project even for that class that just um, just had gotten started um, so that everybody gets a chance to do it since it's reading month and celebrating reading month. And then um, you can find on this website, we're going to post one project um, every week. So check back again next week. Um, students are going to be creating their own illustrated character. So I'm going to switch into a PowerPoint here that's going to kind of explain what an illustrator does. There's also a link in the PowerPoint that you can um, watch a video of an actual illustrator um, and he explains what his job is. Um, but as young students, we all love picture books. And one of the great things about these books is all of the illustrations. So the illustrator is the person that is making all of these beautiful pictures that helps us understand the story, gives us a visual connection, and as new readers even helps us decipher some of the words when we get stuck. So um, I'm gonna switch over to the PowerPoint and then come back to here and show you how to get started on your illustrated character. All right. All right, what is an illustrator? An illustrator is somebody who makes the images for books and magazines. They do the actual drawings. So we're gonna take a look at a couple different illustrators and um, notice that they have their own unique styles. So if you look at an illustrator, often like Mo Willems, for example, his characters share a very similar style. They're all made from very simple shapes. Um, first, we're gonna look at Dr. Seuss and You'll see in a second here, Dr. Seuss uses little U shapes for all of the pupils of his characters. All of his fur is done very similar. He uses um, lines and what's called hatching patterns to show all of the fur on his different characters. So take a look at these characters here. You can see even Cat in the Hat, really a lot of contrast on that one. So you can see those lines he uses for fur. Um, Peter H. Reynolds, one of the things that he often does is dots for eyes, just little dots, and you can see in his books that he illustrates and writes himself, he uses just some color. He doesn't usually color in his entire images. A lot of the times he just uses a little bit of color. Um, Raina Tel Telgamir, she is very popular right now. She does graphic novels, which a lot of students like, and you can see a lot of her characters either have the dots for the eyes or she has the big large comic book style eyes. Um, she also uses a lot of bright color. Now Christian Robinson, you can see here, I'll post the link in the comments, but he has a video available that you can watch, which he explains a little bit about his job. It's very short, it's only two minutes. And you can see in his illustration style, he uses a lot of bright colors, very, very simple shapes for facial features. Um, and Moving on, sorry, I'm trying to keep up with this slideshow. Readers, what do illustrations do for us? So in class, we would have a discussion about this. So you can pause the video here and think about what illustrations do for us as readers when we're reading a book. What do we do when we see the pictures? How does that help us? It helps us understand what the story is about. It helps us decipher words when we get stuck and we don't know. Those visual pictures give us a mental image, being able to recall what the story was actually about. And it helps us visually connect to the main idea or the context of the story. So as new readers, the images are very important to us when we're learning to read. Um, so we are going to be creating our own illustrated character and we're going to get started. Hey, welcome back second and third graders. So to get started on our illustrated character, 
Um, I'm going to show you some student examples. I have a student who made a character um, based on this book, a different animal. So this book, The Birthday Pet, this um, young man wants a turtle for a pet and you can see throughout the book he ends up with different animals when all he really wanted was a turtle. Right, on this page he has a bird. So the student example I have of a character um, is based on this book and so I'll get to that in a second I'll show you that student example but what you want to do to get started is I have this posted you can always pause the website and look at this do not need to print this out you can just write on a little piece of scrap paper some notes about your character and that's going to help you decide what kind of character are you creating are you creating a human like character are you creating more of an animal are you creating a robot are you creating an alien? Um, this will help you narrow down what type of character you want to create. So the character habitat, where does this character live? What is it like there? Does this character live in the forest? Does this character live in a home with a family? Okay, think about where that character lives and what that habitat is like. Then what is the personality or the emotions of that character? Is this character sad or happy or funny? Is this character the character that's always cracking all the jokes and everyone laughs? Um, is this character angry? So decide what the personality is of this character. And then what does this character do? Does this character have a job? Does this character play outside all day? Does this character um, work at a candy factory? Where does, what does this character do? Okay. These are three things that will help guide you as to what this character is going to look like because we need to know a little bit about that character before we can get started. And then this just says other info. So anything else you want to add. So the character works in the candy factory and maybe they actually don't like candy and they're stuck working around candy all day, but they actually don't like candy. Okay, so any other info that you want to add about that character. All right, so this will be your first step. Go ahead and make some of those notes to help guide you as to what this character is gonna look like. All right, so the example I was talking about, the student example for the birthday pet is this awesome drawing of a panda. So this student said that the character is a panda and it lives in her backyard. And the personality of this panda is that it's very happy. And the panda likes to swing. Okay, so after the student filled out this information, she was able to then make her drawing of this awesome panda on the swings in the backyard, which is super cool. So this is an example of a student work. And for you to get started, you can use either a piece of white paper and I'll use this for an example today. Actually, I'll draw it in here so you can see both ways. because We have the examples on the white paper. You could also do this on a piece of copy or notebook paper. You can do it on a piece of copy paper from your printer. You could do it on the back of a piece of notebook paper, or I'm sorry, um, junk mail paper. You could do it on the back of a cereal box or if you've had anything delivered, you can use the inside of that box. Um, any paper that you have available that you can draw on, your parents say it's okay to draw on, you can use for this project. If you have some old piece of construction paper, I have some of this old construction paper around my house that you could, that I'll be using for some projects. Okay, so this character that the student drew, she started off with some very, very basic shapes. And what I want to remind you is that a lot of illustrators, when they're creating characters, start with basic shapes. If you go outside and you walk around, you'll see that a lot of things are made from very basic shapes. We in our household have been looking a lot at Mo Willems Lunch Doodles, and I posted a link about that earlier in the week. 
um, after we read the story, you can see, if you check out some of his videos, it's, it's awesome because it's building on a lot of the skills that we've been using in class with shapes. And you can see that he uses a lot of very basic shapes to create his characters. So don't be afraid to start simple, okay? Here is a circle for the head. Then if you really look close, this neck is a rectangle, right? And then here, the body of this bird is like a triangle. And this wing is another triangle, okay? And here, you have a half circle, a semicircle, okay? Another rectangle here, another circle. So these are all made from very basic shapes. You can see, if I move this over here, it's all made from very basic shapes. So this you can use to start designing your character, okay? Very simple shapes. And I want you to remember that this should be your own design. This should be something that you're proud of. And I want you to think about your drawing style. Every single illustrator is different. Every single person that draws, draws differently. So we want to see this reflective of your drawing style, something that you should be proud of, okay? So for example, if I wanted to start and draw the head of, let's say, uh, let's say I'm going to make some kind of robot character, okay? I can start, I'm going to trace just the bottom of this cup. There's a plastic cup. Trace a cup, coffee cup that you have around your house, plastic cup, okay? And then you'll have the start of a character right here. I'm going to make mine into a robot. My robot works at a house doing the dishes and the laundry, okay? Then another basic shape. I'm gonna use this crayon box to trace to make the rectangle for the body, okay? Just another basic shape getting started. And maybe my robot is just going to have one eye. My daughters have this hair glitter container, a nice small circle that I can trace for the eye. You can darken this in. Now, when you're coloring yours, you can use crayons, you can use markers, you can use colored pencils. If you don't have any of that, you can just use a pencil or even a pen. Okay, turn this on its side and off, all of a sudden you have this great shading tool, okay? You can color this in just using a pencil. You don't need to have a lot of fancy art supplies to make art, okay? Now for the arms, hmm, I think I'm gonna trace this little piece of cardboard here and tore off of our chewy granola box, okay? And I'm gonna, yeah, I think I'll draw this character's arms right at its side. You know what? I really like this. This has a little bit of an angle on the top, so I'm flipping that over so that these will be symmetrical. This one matches this one. Okay, and so these are the, the arms, right? And maybe it's going to have regular kind of fingers on one side, but on this side, it's gonna have like a clamp so it can pick stuff up. Okay, and then I need to decide, well, how's this robot get around? Does it have legs? Does it have a wheel? Does it roll around? Right, go back to your character description. The more details you put in that description, 
the more information you're going to be able to do use for your drawing. I'm going to give this robot two wheels. It's going to roll around on some wheels. These are going to be the tires. Okay. So, and then it's got to have like a control panel in here somewhere for operating. And when you're making the robot, the more little screws and details you can show, the more robot it's going to look. Okay, and maybe this needs some antennas so it can connect back to the owners of the home and get some information about what it needs to do. Okay, so this is just an example of a quick drawing of an illustrated character. I'll show you some other examples I have here. Here's another one I did of a robot. All using basic shapes. Have square, rectangle, circles. Here's another character I created. Now again, this might not look like it's all basic shapes, but if you look closely, here's an oval for the body. <clears throat> this is like an oval here, a rectangle, a rectangle for the neck. Okay, so it starts off with some simple basic shapes. So this is an illustrated character. I use colored pencil on this one. And then this is an animal, more of an animal style. Okay, so I want you to have fun with this. Try and think about some of your own drawing styles. Look at some of the drawings you've been doing at home. What's, what's similar about some of the things that you do in your drawings? Do you always draw your eyes the same way? Do you always draw fur the same way if you're drawing animals? Look at some of those details and include them in your own illustrated character. All right, so we'd love to see some pictures. If you um, get time to do this project, feel free to take some pictures. You can message them to me, email them to me. My contact information is on the website. Just go to the contact tab and you can reach me through there. Um, or you can put them on our Facebook page, which is Gibraltar Elementary Art. All right, we miss you all so much. Looking forward to seeing some of your awesome illustrated characters.